film study, Alabama, Missouri. Now, maybe it wasn't this huge margin of victory that some people, some of us predicted, but it still was on cruise control pretty much for Alabama. Didn't have to struggle for four quarters. Again, they're perfect in the season. And a lot of the reason is because of that passing game. And if they're gonna get a double post open for a touchdown, and the guy who was the inside receiver before motion gonna widen and give himself room for the deep post. And the pocket holds up against four-man rush, and you get your throw up top, play it off the safety, who can't catch up. Let's take a look. One thing they did, alignment is two by two receivers. Here, right at the beginning of the game, 10 seconds in, and then motion in with the outside to switch them up, which helps you to get what you want in coverage, which is they get them stacked at the time of the snap of the ball, which means that somebody's going to get cushioned one or the other in the coverage over there, one or the other. Then into the boundary, if you look what they're doing here, is screen look and wheel on top of that with the tight end, and that's initially where the quarterback puts his eyes. It's over here on the short side. Now he's going to give him that pump fake, and I believe the purpose is he knows all the way off screen back here, you can't even see him, he's so deep, is a safety sitting back in the middle of the field. I think this quarterback already knows I'm going to come back to one of these posts and I'm going to influence that safety by putting my eyes over here. If nothing else, if you can't get him to run, you're going to hold him in the middle of the field. And then if you look up top, the receiver who catches the ball has the chance because he lined up in the slot to really widen things before going on the post. And to double it up, they're going to send the motion man on a post across the safety's face to hold him up where you can get the deep ball. And he gets it. So this is the safety who lined up in the middle of the field trying to chase. Initially, he's lined up right here between the hashes, so he's all the way over here now. And you've gotten him out of position enough with the look and the little pump fake. You see it from behind? This gives you kind of a glimpse of what they did is into the boundary, move them. The safety stay, stay deep and in the middle of the field for Missouri. But when this post came across his face, he's got enough of a step up, and that's the signal to the quarterback. And again, look at the timing. He's ready to throw, anticipating that that move is coming without having to see it first. He's anticipating it, balls out in perfect timing, and it's a great throw. So down by 10, Missouri comes back, actually gets a score. And a receiver starts on one side of the field here on the bottom of the screen, works his way all the way to the other side in the end zone. And the reason is Alabama's only rushing three, so it's three on five, and those uh, red jerseys just bouncing around in there can get no pressure, no penetration. Quarterback sits and sits, and the receiver crosses the field. So you can see where the receiver was, the guy who wound up catching the football. Uh, what they did is they brought the tight end across here, uh, the number three receiver, came across, and uh, he just kind of gets lost after he gets into the end zone. He didn't even see him at this point. His eyes are here kind of in the direction of that tight end. But he has so much time. And this you know, he makes it look like an easy play, but it's a really long throw and a route type of thing that you don't necessarily practice. So even though it was a little bit of an unusual start for the Alabama defense, you know, 10 points there in that first quarter, they give up. Slam the door shut the rest of the way. And then the game, second quarter on, kind of became, frankly, what everybody expected. Alabama comes back, starts extending its lead. You're going to get a tight end to open back here on the back line of the end zone. They try to get in a throwing lane zone type stuff underneath, and he gets lost. And I did notice a couple things about this. If you look, they're trying to match up out there on the outside, and everybody else is going to just, you know, um, match it up and then get in the throwing lanes underneath. So they're really only bringing three guys down here on the goal line. The other thing that'll happen is as the tight end works to the back on the cross, they're sort of kind of getting that mesh com concept with number three receiver uh, to the field side by bringing him across two. What happens, though, is because they only rush three, the back is in check release, and that's what he's going to get. So watch the running back here, uh, Damian Harris. He checks. Linebackers don't come. Now he's going to release and cross the other way. So you get a little bit of that mesh going right on the goal line. And here's what that does. This defender who is free in the end zone is in position to drop into the throwing lane. The tight end is coming his way. He's looking at the quarterback and reading his eyes right now. And his instincts are about to kick in and tell him to get back to the middle where he could break this up. But because Damian Harris has checked and now is going to release, 
you're going to see this defender see him coming and hesitate and stay where he is. He even began to break into that throwing lane before the ball was thrown. Um, and it was going to be close anyway. But as soon as, even though he's seeing the ball thrown, because there's a receiver coming his way, he's now stopped. And that really makes that uh, throwing lane clear back there to the tight end. Okay, so here's an angle that will actually uh, be able to see it even more as to how much it's, uh, how clear that throwing lane is. So tight end's coming on the back of the end zone. Crosser coming across here from number 11. And in the back, as you say, you know, he's going to check and go across the other way. So right here, quarterback knows what he has. Tight end who's about to come. Defender who's kind of headed this way. I don't know if it's the same guy, honestly, from the end zone copy. Yeah, so he had a head of steam headed there to try to maybe get over here and make a play on the ball in the air. But because Damian Harris is coming his way, he stops. And now he's open for a touchdown. So you have to wonder, had he not hesitated and seen the back, could he have sprinted there and batted that football away? He might have been close. Later, Missouri, four men out in the route. It's five-man protect versus only rushing four, but 49 gets free, knocks the ball out, turnover. Show you something I noticed. I'm not sure what the protection that was called, but again, you're only going to rush four if you're Alabama. Quarterback gets this snap, and you're going to see him drift almost like a screen play, but it's not a screen. Everybody's out here running routes down the field. And look at the offensive line with the ball snapped right here at the uh, uh, the 29-yard line. I'm sorry, the 31-yard line. And before the route develops and before the quarterback sets up, you've got rushers who are five and, in this case, almost six yards deep. So you look how deep the pocket is set up versus where the ball was snapped. And the quarterback is just retreating and retreating, almost expecting to get hit. Ball comes out on third down. Okay, down here in the red zone, I believe you got RPO with a hitch built into the single receiver side into the boundary. Just raise up and throw it after the mesh point. He breaks the tackle. The reason you say it looks like it could be RPO, a couple things is, first of all, you look at the double team or the combo, the left guard and left tackle. They knock that poor defensive tackle way up the field. So while that's happening, they've got him on skates. At the mesh point, you can see the quarterback looking to this backside linebacker into the boundary. And he is stepping up, and so he's going to pull that out and got a nice little throwing lane here on the hitch. And there's that combo. They've driven a defensive tackle now three and a half yards off the ball. Make an accurate throw strong, and he can make one move and is in. Jalen Hurts in the ballgame, fourth quarter, hits a corner route up top with two underneath against a seven-man rush. Put it to the outside, big throw. You go back and you look, there's several things going on. First of all, in alignment, you know it's man coverage. They put a tight end into the boundary, three receivers to the field, and look at the alignment. Four down linemen, linebacker, linebacker, linebacker. All three in a position to come after you. And it's a further giveaway because there's nobody deep, zero safeties deep. And the corner has walked over the tight end. Looks like man-to-man. -man. He's behind the blitzing linebacker. He'll have him in man. And it's man-to-man -man everywhere else. So you know you have straight man coverage across the board. And then all seven of these defenders are coming after you. But you don't have to worry because you're keeping in a tight end and a back in protection. So it's just seven-on-seven man-to-man football. What they do is slant, slant underneath and on top with the corner deep, and just read those outside defenders. They stay up, throw the deep corner, make a perfect throw. And then down on the goal line, Damian Harris up into the pile, can't score, bounce it off, no contain, he walks in the end zone. There's an interesting reason that he's able to walk in the end zone. First of all, Missouri's middle linebacker and their defensive tackle are going to do a really nice job of pushing everything back and closing this off. That's uh, physical, and on the snap, they're in the shotgun, and on offense, defensively, you push that line of scrimmage back there a yard. But what's going to happen is it looks like there's an edge defender. The guy's lined up on the edge. If you look where he was, you know, he's lined up out there. He should have contained. When he goes up and can't get through right there, you think, well, who picks him up? 
This is actually the right guard, number 70, who has initially blocked down and has just continued to work and work and work and look for somebody to hit and eventually hits and picks up the linebacker who's in there who would have outside contain. That's a really nice job. All right, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, let me know about it. Or if you have a question or a suggestion, anything like that, hit me up on Instagram and Twitter. I am Radio Wyatt. And then also YouTube and Facebook, just slash Matt Wyatt Media, and you'll hit me up over there also. And as always, thanks to Renaissance Bank for sponsoring these videos. They love SEC football too, and they prove it with their support. So y'all hit them up over there. Tell them I sent you over at renaissancenation.com. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.